this is Dan the Man back with another video and this time on time transformation temperature diagrams and in this case 1050 steel. So we already assume you are familiar with the equilibrium phase diagrams for plain carbon steels and prolite formation from our previous videos but I'd like to first identify the micro constituents and phases present in this diagram. Pan me. Alright, so first of all, we have arsenite forming up here. Next, we can see a formation of primary ferrite. And over here, we can see a formation of perlite. Now, as we lower the isothermal temperature, we achieve higher strength and lower ductility within the steel. And this leads to the formation of bainite. Now, bainite can see, be seen forming here. Here, over here, it's fully formed. Next, a dis by cooling the steel even more, a diffusionless solid state transformation takes place, which achieves martensite. Now, martensite is important because martensite is extremely brittle and also is highly supersaturated with carbon atoms. Finally, it also has a very fine grain size. And that's all, my friends. Howdy there, Matthew Maddox here. I heard Dan the man taught you how to use this here 2TT diagram. Now we're gonna apply those concepts to welding. Let's look at this weld. Here's a weld tip, weld mint, pass. Heat affected weld. Now, what happens in it? Let's use TTT diagram. The base material starts off down here. And then when you're welding, when you fusion weld it, you raise the temperature. And then as it cools, let's see how it interacts with these curves. It could go like that. This is pretty good. You're going to get this primary ferrite, and you're going to get this perlite. It looks like it finishes there, and you get perlite. Now, if we were to have it quench faster, it can clear the nose here, and for martensite. Martensite is brittle. This is bad. Let's take a look at this 4340 steel TTT diagram. You'll note that last time we were looking at 1050 plain carbon steel. This ain't no plain carbon steel, folks. This is the real deal. This is alloy steel. Now, generally, alloying does a lot of good things for the steel. It makes it harder, more corrosion resistant, more strong, but it's also got a downside, a big one, and we're about to find out. Now, let's weld it. We're going to austenitize it. We're going to raise it above A3. And then we're going to cool it. Boom! Martensite. So what's the difference? What's the difference from the plain carbon one? The difference is in the scaling of the time. Let's take a look. Before, the nose was at 0.5 seconds. After 0.5 seconds of cooling, you were for martensite. Not here though. Here it is so much easier to avoid this curve in Detta Martin's side. You call this hardenability. And these alloys are more hardenable, which makes for brittle weld. So, how do we avoid the Martin's side? Well, I'm here to show you. Boom! I'll sanitize for the third time. Name of the game? Avoid the nose. We want it to cool like that, forming bainite or some other microstructure before we go down there and form martensite. So how do we slow the cooling rate? Well, you can preheat the weldment or you can cover it afterwards. But wait, there's more. By post-tempering the steel to about 300 to 400 C's, we can decompose much of the martensite to form a tougher microstructure. Thank you all for listening. Hope you have a wonderful day. Don't forget to subscribe, like, and hit Punch that like button. button.